All right, let's get started on unit three, which deals with applications of derivatives. And the very first application we're going to deal with involves higher order derivatives, which are just derivatives beyond the first derivative. So if you know the position function is your general function that you're given, you differentiate it to get the velocity function. You can differentiate velocity to get the acceleration function. And you can certainly move on to the third, fourth, fifth, and so on derivative, as long as your function continues to be differentiable. Um, in calculus, we really don't deal with the higher order derivatives from a real world standpoint. We just are invested in the position function, the velocity function, and the acceleration function. So that's what we're going to start working on here. Uh, basically, we have a position function s, which equals t cubed minus 3t. And what they're asking us to do is first find the velocity and the acceleration functions. So that's just the first and second derivative. Then evaluate the acceleration at one second. And finally, evaluate the acceleration at the instant when velocity is equal to zero. So the first thing we'll do is we will take s prime, which is going to equal velocity, which is the derivative of position. So we have 3t squared minus 3 because we've just differentiated using the power rule. And then s double prime, the second derivative of position, is the first derivative of velocity, which is equal to acceleration. And we differentiate velocity to get to acceleration. So acceleration will be 6t. So that answers part A. Give us the acceleration and the velocity functions, or the, excuse me, the velocity and the acceleration functions. Part B, this was part A. Part B says, give me the acceleration at one second. So to do that, what you need to do is just take your acceleration function and plug in time equals one. So it's going to be acceleration at time equals one, and that gives me six. And we do need units here. We're told that S is in meters and T is in seconds. So we have here meters per second squared. Just as an FYI, the units of velocity would be meters per second. And then the last part of this problem says, please give us the acceleration at the instant when velocity is equal to zero. So for part C, the first thing you're going to do is take the velocity function, which in our case was 3t squared minus 3, we're going to set it equal to zero. We need to solve for the t values that give us velocity of zero. So if I go ahead and factor here, I can do 3 times t minus 1 times t plus 1 is equal to zero. And so the t values where the velocity equals zero are plus and minus one second. Now, they have not restricted our domain. However, we can go ahead and assume that we're not going to be dealing in negative time. So let's just go ahead and use time equals one second. And typically, the AP exam will restrict this for you. So don't worry about having to assume whether it's restricted or not. Um, so then they just want to know the acceleration when velocity equals zero. Velocity equals zero at time equals one. We actually already found that. Acceleration at one is six meters per second squared. So let's go ahead and do the same thing with part B. And feel free to do this one on your own and then check back in to check your work. So first thing we're going to do is, that's supposed to be an A, not a D, by the way, sorry. Take uh, the first derivative of position, which is velocity, and we have a chain rule situation. So sine differentiates to cosine of 2 pi t, and then we need to multiply by the derivative of your inside function. So that's a 2 pi. Then you want s double prime, which is the first derivative of velocity, which is acceleration. And here cosine is going to go to negative sine, again, of 2 pi t. And then I need to bring out the derivative of my inside function again. So this 2 pi times this 2 pi will give me negative 4 pi squared. The negative, of course, came from differentiating cosine to negative sine. So that's your part A. Your part B asks you to find the acceleration at the moment uh, when time equals one. So acceleration at one is going to be negative four pi squared times the sine of two pi t, so just two pi. Well, sine of two pi is zero, so the answer here is just negative four pi squared. And don't forget, once again, that we have units of meters per second squared. And then the last part of this problem wants us to find the acceleration at the moment when velocity is equal to zero. 
<clears throat> so to do that, we need to take our velocity function, which is 2 pi cosine of 2 pi t, and set that equal to 0. So we need to know when cosine equals 0, and that's going to happen at either pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. And then, of course, every, every pi, really I can take pi over 2 and add pi to it every time. So pi over 2 plus pi k. But let's just look at the pi over 2 first. Basically, we need our angle here to equal pi over 2. So 2 pi t has to equal pi over 2. And now if I divide by 2 pi, I get that my t value is going to be 1 fourth. Now, if I had gone ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and do this, if I had said, let's do this over all reals, I would have had pi over 2 plus pi k. And I would have had to divide this also, this pi k, by the 2 pi. So I'm going to get 1 half times k here. So this is my answer across all reals. I'm just going to evaluate this at um, the first value just for ease of use here. So let's go ahead and say that we're going to evaluate accel acceleration at this moment, time equals 1 fourth. So acceleration at 1 fourth is going to be, um, let's see, sine of, it's going to be negative 4 pi squared times sine of 2 pi times 1 fourth, so 2 pi over 4. So that's going to be sine of 2 pi over 4, which is really sine of pi over 2, which is 1. So acceleration is going to be negative 4 pi squared meters per second squared. 